we are honored for Joyce to present the Norman Mailer Writing Award for Middle and High School Teachers. It's a great pleasure to be here this evening. I was thinking that if I were to try to characterize the essence of Norman Mailer, I would identify it as an uncanny combination of genius and chutzpah, raised to the very highest level. Norman was audacious, he was reckless, he was immeasurably imaginative and inventive. He was passionate, he was very, very generous. And I think unlike his erstwhile rival, Gore Vidal, he was actually a visionary. He believed in many, many things. But most of all, and this is what really divides Norman Mailer from most people, he was not afraid to make a fool of himself. He's just sort of, <laughs> most people are so terrified of any kind of uh, lapse in their dignity and their sense of the ego, that Norman would just sort of plunge in. And I think we saw, we saw on the screens just the very, sort of tenderly, wonderfully ex exposing of his very soul. And Dick Cavett was really pretty close, I think, to <laughs> It was really a, quite remarkable. And uh, I think if Norman were here, he would have enjoyed seeing him. So sort of like the launch of a new career of co comedy. But who knew at the time? Well, it's a great pleasure for me to present the 2013 High School Nonfiction Award to Teresa Healy Jansen for a wonderful essay, In Search of Pink Flamingos. It's a beautifully written, utterly absorbing, and suspenseful account of an adventurous 14 months spent with her family in Ecuador, her doctor, husband, and their four children. Teresa has taught English, French, and social studies to every age group from preschool to university. For the past six years, she's taught high school in Port Townsend, Washington. A linguist, she's intrigued by the interplay of language and culture, and she's passionate about passing on her love of language to her students. She envisions education as a vehicle for understanding, empowerment, and potentially transformation. Last year, Teresa was a semifinalist in a Norman Mailer High School Teacher Fiction Contest. And this nonfiction entry, which she'll be reading from this evening, comprises the first chapters of a book she's writing about her experiences in Ecuador. Teresa. I'm very honored to be here tonight. Thank you so much. I was asked to read a few excerpts from my, uh, my, my submission. I leaned against a gnarled tree and listened to the drip of moisture from the mosaic of green above my head. Next to me, vines cascaded to the ground like silent green waterfalls. The air smelled of rotting leaves and metallic earth. Hidden birds called from their foliage, their shrill whistles piercing the cushion of gray like needles. I was stuck in the eerie Bosque Nuboso, the Ecuadorian cloud forest. For the first time since leaving home, I thought being here was a mistake. I closed my eyes. I didn't want to sleep. I didn't want to dream, for a dream had brought me here. I had dreamed of flamingos. Not the pink plastic models on stainless steel rods speared into squares of manicured lawn, nor the bedraggled croquet mallets in Lewis Carroll's world. I had dreamed of graceful birds with sinewy necks that waited en masse on still lagoons on legs so long and twig thin they seemed to float above the water like a dawn-tinted cloud. And in my dream, the cloud lifted and became a billow of wings rising up to the sun. When I awoke, I realized it wasn't the birds I wanted. I'm not a birder with a life list to check off. It was the motion I sought, the defiance of gravity, the flight to light. Travel is about hope, a hope for revelation and transformation, a belief that beyond the horizon, beauty and truth await. 
In my youth, I traveled like a sponge, floating from place to place, absorbing what I could while trying to learn from the universals and the particulars. I'd come to believe that everyone deserved to have enough, enough food, enough love, enough freedom to deep, think deep thoughts and express them. I was uncomfortable with my culture's definition of enough. I thought it was too much. I bought a book on birds and read about flamingos. The miraculous bird is a wader, not a swimmer, and holds its breath when it feeds. When not feeding, it stands on one leg, half its body in a state of sleep. I figured out that much of the day, the bird is either holding its breath or half asleep. I put down my book. Was that how I was living? Was I holding my breath? Was I, too, half asleep? Thank you.